um, to get a working breadcrumb. Okay? Um, and it was even that good at the end. Let me tell you something about plum. Breadcrumbs, it works. It works very fine and since a very long time. So actually people, they do need CMS. Even if they are building stuff with front end, with a framework or whatever, on the back end, they're going to need this feature because the, the case I'm talking about was really a Django REST API thing with, uh, it was a React project and it was like uh, managing information, architectural information, okay. And yeah, the, the, the customer said, yeah, I, I need a breadcrumb. Makes sense, right? Everybody needs a breadcrumb. So, okay, we can do that. Of course we can do that. Actually, it's very difficult to implement. A breadcrumb is something not easy. And things like Plon, they provide that for free, okay? So, yeah, trust me, those people, they need a CMS, right? And, wow, what I, I know about them is they know web development. They are able to code HTML, to code JS maybe, but they don't know anything about Plon development. Plon development is very specific. It's not a web thing, it's not a common web knowledge to do web, to, to do plan development, right? But still, I think plan should be their CMS. I want plan to be their CMS because plan is good. Plan is doing breadcrumbs. That's valuable. So we want breadcrumbs. So you, you want plan. And I, I want those people to feel comfortable enough with plan to build their own stuff and benefit of everything with good into plan, right? And well, they will, learn, they will not learn about Plon. Well, they could, I would be glad, of course, I, I want that as many people as possible learn about Plon. But I know it's long, it takes a long time, and most part of people won't invest this time to perform, base, to, to build basic websites, okay? Uh, I think we should consider they know enough. They know about HTML, they know about maybe a little programming, could be Python, could be PHP, JavaScript. That should be enough with our system to be able to build custom stuff, right? And the problem right now, uh, they don't know where to start, okay? We have very good resources in, in Plon documentation right now, and this is not a criti uh, criticizing, uh, I'm not criticizing this, um, but here is something uh, someone told me about Rapido. Uh, he was a total beginner with Plon, right? And he picked Rapido because he had the feeling that he, he could do something with that without learning too much, and that was correct. And he told me this. He told me there's a lot of document documentation, but I, I find it too technical and not very suitable for beginners. I would prefer more of a YouTube tutorial or documentation in the style of Rapido, okay? And um, in Rapido, what I've been doing is documenting exactly what you need to achieve something simple from the beginning to the end. And it's not just about Rapido, it's also about how using Diazo a little bit, how using a mock-up a little bit, and how to put it all together to have your application at the end. Um, I think we do not have that in the plan documentation right now. That's probably something we do have now with plan training, which is getting better and better, so that's, that's the right track. But more generally, we are always imagining, uh, we are always considering that people who want to develop with Plone have to learn the whole thing before starting to, to, to actually build stuff. Uh, I disagree, okay? So, what could be Plon development for non plan developer? Well, we do have excellent tools. We do have Diazo. Diazo allows to, 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 to create a sim entirely uh, without touching any ZCML, Py thing or uh, ZCA thing, you can do your entire seeming with that. You have dexterity. Dexterity is good because you can uh, create a, a, a new content type from the interface, export it and import it back into another website. So you can define your own content type without programming at all. Rapido, Rapido is an is, is add-on I've been creating to, to allow to customize the behavior of your plan with a little scripting. So that's actually development, but without involving Plon knowledge, right? You just need to know a little bit about the Plon API, for instance, uh, and a little bit of ba uh, with about Diazo, and you should be fine. And there is Mosaic. Mosaic is also very interesting. It, it's very flexible in order to create 
very great uh, layouts without uh, developing at, at all. You can create your layout with Mosaic from the, the web interface and then you can tweak it in the code. So that's something which is really approachable for a web developer, a regular web developer, right? So, okay, what's, what's good about them? They all work through the web. That's a good point. Not necessarily because I want people to, to work only through the web, but because it, it, it just implies that it's not too connected to the plan architecture, right? It's some, that's something you can use from the outside. So something you might, you might do with Plon running like as a service, right? You have Plon somewhere, you are working from the outside, you can use your own development tools, and you can push your, your work to Plon because that's what through the web enable, right? Even if it's not the first objective, and we're gonna see how we, how we do that. And they also work from the file system. So that's nice because doing everything through the web is kind of dangerous because if your system crash, if you lose your database or whatever, all your code is gone. If you want to rebuild another instance of your server somewhere, you, that's probably better to have everything you've developed in file system, right? But what all those systems, they, they support both through the web and file system. So that's very positive too. And yes, they can be used by non-plan developer. That's what I was saying. They, they work from the outside of plan, okay? By outside, I don't mean it's not in two plan. It is, but it, it does not involve you know about the frameworks which are in two plan. You can use Diazo uh, without knowing anything about viewlets uh, implementation or portlets or whatever. But still, you can take a viewlet, hide it, or move it somewhere else. So that's, that's really handy. That's flexible, right? But now, question. How, come, how, how far can we go with this approach? We all know that um, plan development, regular plan development, allow to do very complex stuff, right? This approach I'm describing here, Diazo, Rapido, Dexterity through the web, um, it, do, it does work, right? But does it allow to create real complete website, complex website, complex features? That's a question. Well, I've been trying that on my colleague. Um, my colleagues are not all plan developers. Uh, some of them are just, well, Django developer or maybe front-end developer and they don't know much about Plon as they don't really want to, to know about Plon because it's kind of, yeah, complex. Um, probably too complex for them, they don't want to invest some for that. So I just decided to, to, to test on them this approach. And there are two use cases, so maybe I should, I uh, know. Uh, the first one is, um, is this one. It's something we've been developing for a, a museum in, uh, in, my, in, my, in France, where, which is about science. And they, they needed a website, uh, which is displayed in the, in the entrance of the museum on a, on a giant, uh, um, um, how do you say, uh, like, a, like a, a giant pad, right? Where you can touch and navigate. And it's also uh, available through the web, of course. And um, this, this is a map, which is showing an imaginary world. Let me show you. And each continent here is a, is a science domain, right? So you can move, you can zoom in, zoom out. That's a map, right? We do a lot of mapping, so that's. And this is an imaginary country, of course. And each of the house here is, is a lab. So you can get information about this lab. You can have photo, where is it, uh, where you have few figures, you have a description and so on, you have photo here, you can have videos, kind of stuff, right? Well, this is a plant site. This is entirely a plant site. And yet it has been built entirely by a non-plant developer, right? Um, if you take plant and you give it to someone who is not plant developer, basically what you, get, when you, what you will get is uh, a regular plant with Barcelona and a well, few folders and that's it. Well, this is totally different than a a regular plan site, right? It has been developed by someone who does not know about plan, right? Um, here, the way it has been done is uh, first, the, the, my colleague has been creating uh, a content type to manage the, the labs, so that's quite simple. A lab gonna have a name, a director, 
few photos. So that's something you can do easily through the web, right? And then we have exported this content type, but it's on the file system. And um, now we had to create this nice presentation, okay, with a map, with uh, the, all the, the houses that can be clickable and so on. This has been done using Rapido. Uh, we have been building uh, an NPM project to create the map and so on, and we call Rapido to get as JSON all the information we want from the labs. So it's allowed to create the map itself, and when we click on a house and open it, this model is filled in by uh, a view, a, a Rapido view, right? It's, I'm going to show you later at, after, after this talk that there is a demo about Rapido and you're going to see how it works. And this is basically, we picked information into the actual plant content to create this page, right? And this is really easy to do. So I go back to my slide. Yeah, no, sorry. Here we go. So that was one example. It was not too complex, right? Uh, the second one is, is more complex. This is a platform uh, for legal, legal class actions. So people can register on this website and see all the, the, the class action which are on, ongoing at the moment. See, here's one about banking. So you can go there and register. You can simulate if you are uh, the kind of person who could sue the bank about such or such criteria, whatever. Um, this is, I've been, so this is in production, right? I, I, w I won't uh, demo it too much because I, can, I don't want to, to have problems with lawyers. Um, but basically, that's a very nice website. Here's what we, what we get. And we have, a front, uh, we have a back office, which is quite complex. So this is a front, the front website, of course. So that's totally w uh, a planned website, right? And the, the back office is pretty much uh, this, uh, a basic plan theme, Barcelona, right? Because we just needed to manage the cases, okay? The, the, the different customers with their files, so they can upload their files, they can, um, the, the lawyer can analyze those files, this is all secured. And we have also PayPal, so people can pay and we can control that it has been paid properly. We can, there are several payments during the, the process. That's, that's actually very complex. And the, the lawyers who are managing the case, they have a messaging system, which is not using emails because, because of security. Uh, so it is implemented into, into, into the Rapido application. It manages uh, filtering, reporting about how many people have already paid, how many people are, uh, are customer of such bank, so they can decide if it's okay to sue the bank or not, and a lot of different stuff to manage. Well, same thing, plan site, no plan developer, right? That's, that's what a much bigger development I have been involved to, to help regarding the Python and so on, but there is no plan, actual plan development to do it. And it was mainly front-end thing. So that's the kind of thing we can build. And yeah, it has been built by non-plan developers, as I've already said it. And the question is, why? Why, why a CMS? Why plan? Uh, th that's not their tool uh, originally. Um, well, actually, plan is a fantastic back office. And it comes up free. That's, that's free too. That's already really secured. That's uh, handy to manage access right, uh, um, users. So I can define, for instance, lawyers groups, uh, lawyers firms, so they can manage their own customers and don't, uh, don't uh, go to customers from another firm. This kind of stuff can be done really easy with Splon. If you had to implement it on top of uh, Symfony or, or Django, uh, it would take ages, right? So Plon is, and CMS more generally, but Plon was really, really relevant in this case. But we had to implement a very, very specific front uh, for, for this website to provide something fancy for the visitors. Uh, and this is complex to do with Plon, regular development, right? So that's why Plon plus non-Plon approach was actually the right way to go. Um, what we have been doing here is basically to use Plon as a backend, which is very versatile, which is very flexible. You can, you can manage different types of data. You can 
uh, de decide which going to be the schema of your, of your data. You can uh, benefit of all the security, but you don't show anything from plant directly. You just show to the visitor something which is, has been designed by, by a front-end developer uh, using his own favorite tools, and it does whatever he wants. It just uses Plone as a backend, right? So that's, that's why Plone was relevant here. So yeah, how they did it, um, I've been explaining a little bit already, but um, first, they develop a front-end theme, right? So that's static file, HTML, JavaScript, CSS. Uh, they have been building it not manually, of course. They have been using um, their, the, the, the frameworks they, they prefer. So that was um, uh, Angular 1, I think, for one, and, the, and React. Um, but that's totally open. You can, that's not open edited. You can choose whatever you want. They have been building it with uh, NPM or Gulp or whatever they prefer. Um, they have created dexterity types. Uh, we have been customizing the workflow as well, all through the web. This is something which is totally easy for, for a non plan developer. We have impl been implementing specific features with Rapido, because at some point we need the, the backend to, to provide some uh, non-default plan, non plans features, right? So that's why our Rapido uh, can, can do good stuff. And we use Diazo to mix all together, right? That's how it works. And the kind of stuff we have been doing are, well, actually quite complex. It's not about having a nice home page. That's much more than that. We have been doing a map, an interactive map, which is binded to, to uh, plant contents. Uh, in the case of the, of, the, of the class action website, we have been doing a registration wizard, which is really complex because it asks a lot of information about the person. But depending on the case, we have different information to manage. Um, so it has been done using collective easy form. So the developers uh, just create the Rapido thing which call an easy form object. And this easy form object is managed by the lawyers. The lawyers, they can decide that in this case, I need to ask the person this, 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 this. That's, that's the content somewhere in the case. And the Rapido application takes it and insert it into the, the registration wizard, wherever it's, it's relevant, right? We have an, a PayPal, PayPal endpoint, which has been implemented with Rapido. So I don't know if you're familiar with, with PayPal. PayPal. Do you say PayPal or PayPal in English? I have no idea. PayPal? OK, it's cute. Um, so this, how does it, how, how do it work? You, when you have PayPal in a uh, website, you have a simple form. It, it submits information to PayPal. You can pass an extra information, which is supposed to be an ID, and PayPal is, is supposed to call back an endpoint, where you're going to give back the, the ID you passed at the first step, and then you can confirm by sending a post, uh, saying, yes, OK, the transaction has been done. So that's something you can register on your own system, so you can know that such customer has paid this amount at this time, right? Well, this is actually not easy to do. Uh, it's not very complex, but it's not easy to do if you do it in plan. With Rapido, it was very simple, totally approachable by anybody. Um, we have been implementing a messaging system as at all, so it's uh, something where you get notified by mail that you have something to read on your personal workspace, and you go there and you see a conversation. So it's not not very complex regarding the feature, but implement that in Plone could take uh, one or two weeks, I guess. So that's what the kind of feature we've been achieving with this system. Um, to, to say a word about who practices, we generally have a regular NPM, NPM project, so that's where the front-end developer is working. And we have a Plone build-out plus a sim, which is into an egg, so that's a regular uh, Mr. Bob generated template, uh, project, sorry. And in the static folder, we add an extra, uh, an extra folder which is front, where the NPM project is supposed to push everything when it builds. So when you launch NPM run build, it's going to push everything which is local to the front uh, folder to the front folder into the, 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 the plant egg, right? So that way, the developer has not to do anything regarding the plant structure, the, the, the structure of the, of the Python eggs, right? He don't care, just use NPM, only NPM. 
Um, yeah, well, the front folder is ignored in, uh, in the master, in the git master. And to deploy in production, we have a branch where it is not ignored. So we have a small NPM script, which do a merge with no commit. So that, that way you get back into prod everything uh, that I've been developing lately. It launch a build, and then it push everything to the prod server, where our deployment system is deploying everything. So we really don't care about plan here. We just do NPM commands, and everything goes directly to production, right? So that's really comfortable for, for non plan developer. And yes, we can do better than that. Uh, thanks to Asco. Asco, uh, Asco is not here, that's a shame, but um, he has been doing really interesting tools uh, with the same um, approach. Um, He's been doing a plant sim webpack. Uh, this is something I haven't uh, used because in all the projects I've been describing, uh, the front end is not using plant resources at all. It's not using mockup pattern or whatever, it's just using its own uh, JavaScript framework. Okay? But you might want to reuse mockup patterns or Barceloneta, so the style or the, the feature from the, the plan front into your own front project. And this is not easy to do. Well, that's something that plan sim webpack does. It is able to check out from your living plan server, running plan server, everything it might need and build locally something which does bind to, to mockup or uh, to Barcelona. You get everything from the plan uh, front to build your own stuff. So you can customize plan that way without going into plan development. And when plan development comes to front end, it, it gets really difficult for someone to know about it, right? So that's a good, a good, a good product. There is also um, the it's a little bit Big, maybe I should zoom. Oh, sorry. Uh, collective uh, sim sites. Um, it's, this is a concept um, Eric has been talking about this morning in the keynote, the fat team, fat sim uh, concept. So the idea here is to put into the sim, into the, the, the dia of the sim, so into the static folder we have been talking about, everything you might need, not just the sim. So you're going to be uh, generic setup profiles. So you can configure your, 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 your website. Dexterity models, and I'm not talking about the dexterity model, which is encoded into the profile because it's really ugly. That's directly the dexterity model with the nice XML uh, schema. It can be put into the SIM as well. It manages translations, and it manages permissions, and vocabulary, I think also. And this is automatically deployed. That means you, you, you put all of the stuff into your sim, you install the sim, and the, this plugin going to run the, the import of all the, the, the generic setup. So you get everything installed from your sim. So this is really inter interesting because it means that the developer are going to do that. They do not need to uh, create an, an egg, basically. They just manage uh, a basic static, static folder with all those information at the right place, and it's going to be deployed on plan, right? And there is PlanSim Upload, which is an NPM package, which allows to push all you, you, a local theme to Plon. So here you are not even running a Plon locally. You just have Plon somewhere, you don't know where. Some, some, someone smart, like me, <laughs> set up a Plon site for you. You don't know about it, you don't know about build out, you don't know anything about Plon. You just have a URL and you push from npm command, you, you type your npm command and you're going to push your local theme to plan. So that's plan as a service, right? Uh, and in, with this, you can push whatever the, the thing I've been talking about in the previous tool, uh, dexterity, translation, permission, generic setup, etc. And also it could be Rapido because Rapido is part of the theme as well. So everything that goes into the theme can work with this approach. So that's also something very powerful. And Asco made a really interesting blog post about that uh, two weeks ago, something. And I think that some things could really change uh, the way people um, start with Plon. Well, that's it. That's, I don't know, yeah, it should be okay. Uh, that's what I, I was, uh, I, I really think we need to improve this, this, 
this thing, how people get uh, involved into plant development, uh, I mean, plant de <coughs> developing with plants, uh, without being having to learn too long about all the stuff we are doing. And, as, and we love it, I know we love it, but yeah, uh, not everybody loves that, right? So that's it. Question. Um, yes? Do you, do you always still use the ZODB or do you ever... Oh. Yes, of course, because plan here is just a backend. So the idea is just not changing the backend. This is not a um, plan server approach we have been presenting this morning, right? This is using basic plan, current existing plan. It could, been, it could even be plan 4. No, I know it will not work with plan 4. But plan 5, regular plan 5. So ZODB is here. Everything is here, but you just don't want to know about it, basically. That's what I'm proposing here. You just have something running somewhere, and you push your information, it's going to be deployed, but it's going to use regular plant stuff. Yes, ZODB is part of it, absolutely. And which is good because, for instance, in the, in the case of the, of the class action thing, that's legal stuff. And it's really important the security is very good. Uh, people are uploading uh, legal information about them, personal information, so on. We want this to be really secured. And PLON provides that. PLON is secured. I mean, it's really solid security here. So. It's a good thing that you can have such a good backend without being, being obliged to learn about how it works. We don't care how it works. We just do our development the way we know, uh, using Angular or, or whatever, and, he, and we benefit from plan anyway. Anything else? Well, that's it. Thank you very much. I won't move because I, I do the next thing, which is the demo about Rapido. I don't know which time it's supposed to be. Just check. Um, so 14, so okay. So in the second half. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> uh, so, oh no. This is not my computer because mine it was not working with the, the video projector. So I, have, I had to set up back all my demo on this machine, but that's, that's fine because Rapido is really easy to deploy. Uh, Rapido development are, are quite easy to deploy. So uh, Rapido. Rapido is something you manage from the seeming editor. So here is the seeming editor. If you're familiar with Diazo, that's exactly what the, thing, the kind of thing you do. You have um, a sim folder where you have your, uh, your styles, your HTML, whatever. Well, if you just add a folder named Rapido and you create into this folder another folder name, for instance, Demo, it just instantiates a Rapido application named Demo, right? There is nothing else to do. There is no, no declaration somewhere, no file to produce or whatever. You just create those folders and you get Rapido enabled, right? That's enough. And the principle of Rapido is you're going to create blocks. So th this has nothing to do with actual. Oh no, a bit weird. Well, uh, maybe if I. Yeah, it's much better. Um, excuse me, I just try to maximize. Yes. Um, blocks are composed of an HTML file. For instance, this is a block. OK, static HTML file. And that could be enough if you're happy with that. Um, and this block will be inserted into uh, your pages using a rule in Diazo. So here, my first demo, I take this block I've been just showing the code of is just basic uh, static HTML. And I include it somewhere using a Diazo selector, right? So I, I say, before the first heading, I'm going to put this block. Right? And that's how it goes here. If I go to my demo folder, here, a very simple example. Here, I get my block, right? So that's a piece of HTML that have been injected into this page. OK, well, that's simple, right? You don't need Rapido to do that. This could be done, for instance, with Mosaic. Mosaic is a perfect tool for that. But still, that's the principle of Rapido. Now, the thing about it is, you can display information which is not necessarily static. Here, I have changed my block with something which is actually getting information from the contents. And here, I'm using the, key, the, the subject 
you know, I've been tagging different contents and I'm listing all the different uh, amount of documents I've been uh, having the same uh, subject of the current one. So this one is about Rapido and through the web and I, I, I see here there are three, uh, four other documents about through the web. So this is dynamic and this is something you cannot do with Mosaic, right? With Mosaic you can add a, a content, a field, so it can be, uh, it can be an image, it can be a text, but you cannot compute stuff, right? So this is something Rapido allows. How it works? Well, this time I'm going to have not just a layout, and here my layout is not even HTML, this is a patch template. Uh, so I'm going to have this layout, and in this layout I'm going to put some information from, well, Python. Here I'm using Python to implement different computations. So here I have, for instance, tags. You're going to get um, all the tags corresponding to the current content. So here's how, I, how it goes. I get the content from the context. Uh, and for each, each uh, subject in the, in the content, I'm going to get the score for the, so for the corresponding keyword. So that's quite simple to implement. I won't go in too much into detail. Maybe I should zoom, out, zoom in a little bit. I don't know we do that. Um, yes, probably better. So that's simple Python script. And it is binded to the, um, to the template using this YAML file where I, I declare all the elements I want to use into my template. So it produces this, OK? Now, we probably like this to, to do something. Right now, we're just displaying an information. What I would like is it actually display all the, the different contents having the same, uh, the same tag. So if this is through, through the web, I go here and I see all the document, all the folders sorted with, in two tabs about through the web. And here, if I click mockup, I'm going to do the same, documents and folders. And I can have a preview. Okay, well, this is done with Rapido plus mockup, and it's really easy to do. It's it's actually a model pattern, so a model mockup pattern, which display Rapido block, which use a pattern, which contains a pattern, which load a content. Simple, right? <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how how it is. Um, so this is the template. So that's just. Uh, listing in, into, a, into a list all the different tags. That's pretty much the same as a, the previous example. And I have, um, no, sorry. I have something to show here. I have been using this pattern here, right? So that's the auto, oh, sorry. The auto talk uh, pattern is displaying the tabs, right? And here I am using content loader. So content loader is the pattern which is able to load something. So that's how I'm, I, I make the preview working. So if I go there, so that's the auto talk pattern. And when I click here, you're going to use the, the, the loader pattern, right? So that's quite simple. And here I have nothing to do but to put some accurate markup on my, on my different tags, and that's enough. There is no JavaScript involved. I've, there are JavaScript involved, but not mine. I haven't been writing any JavaScript for that. And that's how my, my, uh, my model is, is created, basically. So that's, that's not a lot of code, if you have a look. I have here, um, I get the list, as I get the title from the different contents. That's not too much difficult to do. What I've been using here is the the Plon API. So the Plon API is available within Rapido. So you can call context.api and do whatever you want with the Plon API. And Plon API is quite well documented, so it's quite easy to, to know how to do stuff. So here I'm using content.find to make a search. And I'm searching everything having the same subject as the current subject, right? Um, and this is yeah, the, 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 the example I've been describing just before. So that's very simple to do, but still, the result is quite interesting, right? This is not easy to... If you try to imagine how would you would do that with regular plan development, it would be not that easy, right? This is very simple and still quite impressive. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> but uh, so someone who is not a plan developer can do that. 
Wow, that's cool. Now, let's move to a more advanced feature. Here, I'm actually replacing the, uh, replacing the current view. Uh, all the examples before were just adding extra stuff into the regular plan layout. So it's adding, adding a block here, and that's pretty much it, plus bind it to mockup to get extra stuff, JavaScript stuff. Here, I'm just replacing entirely the rendering of plan with my own Rapido block. And what it does here, it's, manage, it's managing a glossary. So I can create definition for the different terms. So I don't know, um, IP, internet protocol. I can save. That's my new entry. I can edit, change, or can delete. So that's, it is using uh, a persistence mechanism, a storage system, which is provided by Rapido by default. And I use it to actually enable this glossary wherever I am. So if I go back to the home page of Plone, where we talk about SMTP, I think, yes. Here, I see that SMTP have been detected as part of my glossary, and I can over it and have the definition, right? So I've implemented a way to manage my glossary, so that's one thing, and I also injecting all my glossary information into all the page of the website. While this is not too difficult to do, I will not go totally into in detail about this, but just show you the amount of code for that. We have basically the block which lists all the different definitions, that's the one. It has a small Python script to, uh, to just query the, the the, the storage system to get the records and sort them. And we have a page for editing a term. So we have two, uh, two information here, the term itself and its definition, plus the different button, save, delete, and close. And here is the implementation in Python. It's really, really short, really small. That's it about managing the glossary term. And to inject the glossary information into my pages, that's JavaScript. So here, I'm just using the JSON API of, of Rapido. Rapido provides a storage system plus a JSON API on, on top of it. It's, this is not the Plone REST API, because here we are not managing Plone contents, but just small records. So that's definition for glossary, but could be anything you want, like uh, uh, statistics, like uh, visit counting. This kind of stuff can be stored that way. And you don't want it to be actual Plone contents, right? So we can require, here I've been using jQuery, but it could be anything else. I get all the records from my glossary application, and then I search the, the page with a regex re, that way to replace all the words which match a term with a small um, abbreviation tag with a title. That's quite simple. And that's OK, that might look a little bit difficult. That's JavaScript stuff, but that's something someone who knows about JavaScript can, can do in in a few minutes, right? So that's my demo. Thank you.